Hey. So it wasn't too long ago in the grand scheme of things that a privy or an outhouse was really your only option for taking a nice comfortable BM. Um, indoor plumbing was reserved for the rich and the higher class. They had um, holes in their homes that were attached to a shaft that would go down into a cesspit. The commoners uh, also had cesspits, but they had privies or outhouses that would go over these outdoors. Um, and cesspits weren't just for human waste, they put a lot of other waste down there. Prisoners, dead prisoners, were actually thrown into these. Um, so you can imagine that the stink kind of welling up from these got pretty bad. So they had to start um, a new job, which were gong farmers. And what the gong farmers did, they were also known as nightmen, uh, because they were only allowed to work at night, they would go in and they would clean out these uh, cesspits. Um, and as I said, you can find all sorts of things down there. Uh, people actually had drowned in some of these cesspits. They'd go in, uh, the boards may have rotted or whatnot, and they just fell right through and ended up dying. Um, so it wasn't until about the 18th century, so around 1775 in Scotland, where Alexander uh, Cummings uh, had the first patent for a flush toilet, but we wouldn't actually see these entering homes until the 19th century and becoming commonplace, as I said, in the 20th century. So we're really only about a hundred years removed from not having to use one of these uh, all the time. Um, uh, another thing that was used were uh, chamber pots in the Victorian era, where they would do their business in these pots that were usually located in the bedroom, and then a servant or uh, the homeowner or whomever would take this pot, give a little yell out the window, and then just toss it down. Um, and so passers-by often could almost expect to be rained down with uh, um, that day's or that night's uh, business, let's say. Um, it was gentlemanly um, back then for the men to walk closer to the street. Uh, that was where the open trench was and a lot of the filth and everything was there. So they would walk closer to the street where the lady would walk closer to the building. She was less likely to be in the splash zone, let's say, being that close uh, to the building as well. Um, so we're, as I said, only about a hundred years removed from actually having to do all these things. Um, back then, also, there were uh, muck rakers. And the muck raker's job was to go through the streets and clean up. It wasn't just human waste that was getting into these gutters. It was uh, animal waste as well. Uh, no cars back then. So horses, cows, whatever they were bringing to market or through the streets, uh, their feces were everywhere as well. So these muck rakers would come through and... Um, and take it all away. The thing about the gong farmers and the muckrakers is they actually get paid three times higher wages than uh, anyone else at that time of, of the same unskilled labor class. So, um, you know, if you want to consider them the first sort of beginnings of plumbers, they were already getting paid pretty well. So today, we're gonna go inside uh, and I'm gonna show you how to install an actual flushing toilet. As I said, that's more commonplace now or is very standard now um, than back in the day. So it's a raw day, it's a cold day. Thank goodness we don't have to uh, use these all the time. So come on, I'll show you what to do. So you might be saying, this is a lot of stuff. And I start being a little intimidated thinking, what do you do with all of this stuff? Um, I think a better question is, how did I know to get all this stuff? What is it and where does it go? Uh, the answer to that, planning. I did a lot of it uh, for two days. I spent one day sitting with the homeowner, which is pretty important. You need to know what is they're looking for. Um, got an idea on where their placement was gonna go. Some of it is different than the layout on the blueprint. As I said, a lot of things can get planned, but then when you actually start putting it together, um, you can see things in 3D and it changes your mind a little bit on how you want to configure things. Same for me. I've got a lot of uh, parts here, not a lot, but a few parts here that are extras. Just in case I run into something, I've got an idea on how I want to run something, uh, some of the drainage. Um, and in my head, it feels like it's going to go right, but I also thought that, okay, well, when I'm on site, in case I run into X, Y, or Z, I'm going to get this part as well so I don't have to then run out waste all that time, go to the hardware store, come back, or the supply house, come back and, and get back in. It's, uh, it's a lot of work, 
Uh, it takes you out of the, the zone of what you're doing. You got to kind of re reconfigure what it is you were doing and it's just a pain. So um, a couple extra little pieces here and there is not going to hurt and then uh, I can always return them in the end. Um, if I had my own truck, then I'd have a lot of these extras and incidentals and whatnot kind of stored on there. But where I'm working out on my own personal vehicle nowadays, I don't have uh, the room to kind of hang on to a lot of these things. So, um, so a few extras, but uh, today's plan, I'm going to be drilling some holes, I'm gonna do some layout, show you how to drill the holes, where the holes are gonna go. Um, and then if there's time, I'm also gonna start hanging some brackets and things for uh, some of the waterline stub outs that we're gonna have. Uh, those are uh, these pieces over here uh, from my class. You've seen these in the shop. We have, have one kicking around. I'm doing everything in PEX, uh, but I'm gonna do a copper conversion coming out. Um, for me personally, I just like the look of it better. It seems a, it's a little more rigid coming out of the wall. Um, I don't like the look of PEX. It's a, it, 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 you can get it to look nice, but I just personally don't like it. Um, so I'm gonna do this. Um, and I'll show you how once we get to that. So, as I said, today um, I've got a meeting that I need to get to in the afternoon, so I won't be here for very long, we'll, but we'll at least get some holes drilled, and uh, I think tomorrow is gonna be a lot bigger push on getting a, a lot more done. So, stick around, and uh, I'll show you how to uh, measure and drill some holes. We'll do, do an initial rough in. Okay, so I'm here in bathroom one, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with roughing in our toilet. Um, some of the things that I need right now are just to know the measurements in order to uh, center our toilet in this room and the rough-in distance from the back wall to where the hole in the toilet actually is uh, and where our flange is gonna go. And what I mean by flange is this. So this is our toilet flange. It'll sit right in the floor. Toilet sets right down on top of that with our wax ring. And then there are uh, flange bolts that will go in these two slots right here, and that'll hold our toilet down to the floor. We'll go over that when we actually do the toilet install. Now you'll notice that it's closed off in the middle here. Now, uh, this is for testing purposes. When the inspector comes through, he's gonna wanna see that our system doesn't have any leaks. And in order to do that, we'll pump it up with about four to five pounds of pressure. And then we'll see um, if that pressure actually holds. Um, so uh, this particular brand has a test plug already in it. Uh, and what you do at the end is you just hammer these out, uh, make sure the area is nice and smooth and everything's fine. Um, another way that you can do it if you don't have a, a, a flange like that are these little caps. And how these work is there's a little lip right here and you're going to clean and glue this edge here and that'll sit right down on your, um, on your pipe and make a nice airtight seal. When you're done with that, because it's glued, it's never gonna come off, but this diameter makes it so any fitting will fit right over that. It doesn't uh, obstruct that at all. So all you're gonna do is just, same as that, take a screwdriver and a hammer and just get that out of the way, cut it out, get your razor knife out, make it nice and smooth so nothing like toilet paper and things are gonna get caught on that. Um, and then you never have to worry about that again. Um, one of the biggest things that you always want to remember though is before you set your toilet, make sure you take these plugs out because you don't want to get that call from somebody um, that you forgot to take this test plug out and they take that, they use that toilet for the first time and give it a nice flush and uh, yeah, what would that actually look like? Hello, this is Paul. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, uh, wait, what? You clogged your toilet? Oh, man. Uh, wait, what? Oh, God. Oh, no, the test plugs. I forgot to take them out. I'm so sorry. I know. I, I know. I know. It was a very nice wood floor. Uh, I'm sure we can do something with it. Um, look, I'll, uh, what? Um, how many burritos did you eat? Oh God, that, yeah, that sounds awful. Um, look, I'll, I'll, um, listen, there's no need to bring my mother into this, all right? She's not even a trucker. Hello? Hello? That was rude. My goodness. 
<sighs> anyway, nightmare, not a call you want to get. So, set those aside. Now the measurement we're looking for, uh, for this toilet, it's a common measurement, is 12 inches from the back finished wall. So we're working with a stud wall right now, so I want to add a half an inch to that. So 12 and a half inches from our stud wall to the center of my flange. Uh, and the reason I'm adding that half inch is because we're going to be putting half inch drywall in here. So that half inch needs to be added, because when you put that toilet in, uh, it, as soon as you set it, if you don't have enough room, then it's going to be rubbing on that back wall or you'll have to dig into the drywall in order to get that toilet to fit that dimension. You don't want to be doing that, obviously. So we add that half inch in order to make sure that we have enough room. So as I said, just take my tape measure, I've got my pencil, come out 12 and a half inches, make a mark, and then I want to find the center of this room. So. I know that this is 39 inches from there to there. Half of 39 is, uh, what, 19 and a half. So I'm gonna come in 19 and a half and uh, place a mark. And do the same for the other side. 19 and a half, looks fine. Just a little double check, never hurts. Um, now you also, when you're doing this, want to make sure that you're allowing for the wall thickness here and there as well. Um, again, half inch drywall, half inch drywall. Now I'm only looking to have at a minimum 15 inches uh, from my center hole to the wall and from my center hole to the wall or an obstruction, uh, say a vanity or any other thing. Um, so that's code. So I want to make sure I have that, but we have 19 and a half. So uh, I don't have to worry about that 15. We're well beyond. So the, um, now that we know where our uh, closet flange is going to go, one of the other measurements that I want to keep in mind is where is our supply line going to go uh, to actually fill the toilet um, when you flush it. So rule of thumb for that, you want to come you want to come about six inches off to the left and then you're going to come up seven inches from the floor. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, the six inches gives you an offset from the toilet itself and I come up seven inches. Some people come a little too low and when you put in a trim piece here, baseboard or whatnot, the escutcheon, the little decorative piece that kind of hides the hole when the pipe comes through it, that actually will sit on top of the baseboard and it looks silly. So, you know, I, want to, I don't want to come up too high because then I'm going to be stuffed in behind the toilet tank and that's going to be a hindrance. But if I come too low, then it could affect some of the decorative pieces. Just with these little details, it's a good idea to think about when you're, when you're laying out a project, who's going to be coming in behind you and how is it going to affect them. It doesn't always work out, um, which is why electricians and plumbers and, and any other um, trade kind of have friction with each other at times because all our stuff kind of gets in each other's way. Um, and I can tell you this, when I drill this hole, I know that I have wires running right underneath here and I want to see where they are as soon as I know that they're far enough down that I'm not going to cut into them. But I also, again, I went underneath the house to take a look to make sure that my cut and my hole that I'm making here uh, wasn't going to run into a floor joist, which I could see um, here because I can see where the nails are. So I know that I'm, I'm at least in the middle of the two floor joists. So I'm not going to uh, wreck anything structurally, but the electrician has run wires, three wires this way. So when I cut through, I'm going to see what kind of hindrance those are. And then we're going to have to figure out uh, what to do from there. But one thing at a time, uh, I at least know this is where my hole needs to be if we need to figure out something with the electrician to make this work, then we'll do that. It's one of the reasons that Portland actually doesn't um, do their final rough-in inspection until the electrician, the plumber, HVAC, whoever has to come in has done all their, their rough-ins, then they inspect it all at once because they could come in inspect something for the electrician, but then the plumber comes in and says, hey, I need this moved. Now the electrician has undone what's already been inspected, and then they have to come back in and re-inspect. So they just do kind of the, the uh, whole inspection all at once. Not everybody does that. I'm not sure what Gray would do, um, but I know 
um, that this is what uh, something that Portland does just to kind of save save on having to come back over and over again and where inspectors are having such a hard time going out because of COVID-19 right now, it's a good idea to just make sure everything's right and send out once. Um, so getting back to the, the water line, what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to come over six inches, come up seven, and then I have um, one of those brackets. It's actually right here. And this piece here. So that'll fit through there and strap to that. That goes in there and that holds it up nice and tight. And then um, we can run our PEX line, come up here. This, as you can see, um, I'll show, I'll talk about this a little later on. Right now, let's just worry about drilling our hole and uh, see where those, those PEX lines are, or those uh, electrical lines are, and uh, figure out the next, pro next step. So I've got my drill, and I have a hole saw on here. Now this hole saw is not quite big enough to fit this pipe, uh, and I didn't bring my jigsaw with me today. I do have a, a sawzall, but I don't know if I want to hack this hole completely. Um, so normally what I would do is I would just drill a pilot hole, take my jigsaw and just drill it around. Uh, if I had my truck with me and I were doing this every day, uh, I would have the proper size hole saw and I wouldn't, then I'd be able to keep it on my truck. I'm not going to go out and buy one just for two holes. I have two toilets. It, they're, they're pretty expensive, you know, twenty, thirty dollars uh, for uh, one-time use. I don't really, really want to do that. So I'm going to use this one. And if you haven't used a hole saw before, uh, what we've got here is a pilot bit right in the middle. And what that pilot bit does, you want to put that on the center of your hole, and um, that starts. You can see it sticks up. You might be able to see that it sticks up just a tiny bit more than these teeth. So that gets into the center of that hole and as you're drilling it makes sure that that drill has a, a little bit of a support so it's not going to be jarring around. Um, I've tried drilling a hole with no pilot bit in there. It is not an easy start um, and but it was one of those deals where I was out in the middle of nowhere uh, the pilot bit had broke and I had to do what I had to do to get that hole drilled but it's a mess and it's not always easy to get going. Um, so that pilot bit is very important. It's a lot safer too. So what I'm going to do, come right over here. We have our mark. I'm going to get my pilot bit right on that and make sure I'm in forward. Just get it. I'm not putting a ton of force down on that. I just enough to hold the drill in place. You want to make sure that if it catches, you know where that drill is going to be going. Right now it's going to be going into my leg. Um, so I may back up just the tiniest bit, not a ton of room to do that. But you always want to make sure that when you're using any sort of a power tool, a knife, anything, where is that follow through going to go? If it slips, if it catches, where is it going to end up? Is it going to hurt you? Is it going to hurt somebody else? Is it going to destroy uh, material? So I also know that this drill has kind of an overload on it that if it does get jammed, uh, it actually stops. So it's kind of a safety. It doesn't always stop. Then I've definitely gotten some bruises on me in, at times, but um, just things to be considering when you're using power tools or any sort of tool, any knife, anything, where's it gonna end up? Um, just trying to be safe. Oh, speaking of safe, um, I know my students especially are noticing I'm not wearing my safety glasses. So I'm gonna grab those and uh, then we'll drill this hole. So now that, uh, now that I'm styling in these bad boys um, and my students can not call me out for not wearing my safety glasses, we'll drill this hole. So get that started and as it's touched, Now, as you can see, this is pretty dull, um, but it was one of the only ones that I had, so I'm gonna be working with it. So just bear with me for one second. You'll see a little smoke. Um, it's not ideal.
there we go. So, once you drill that hole, this plug is going to be in there. What I want to do is I want to make sure I lock that trigger because I don't want this coming on as I'm taking that out. Ideally, you would pull your battery so that that's not even going to turn on at all. Last thing you want is to be messing with pulling this plug out and then have that drill turn on. So, this one actually is probably one of the easiest ones I've seen. I've got my gloves on. This is pretty hot. Um, but, take out. You can do this with a screwdriver. I have my Leatherman right here. I have some slots on the side. You can just fit those right in there. And with each hole, you're going to need to pull these plugs out. It'll fill up that bit pretty quick. So you want to make sure that you get that plug out every single time. And there it is. That's our first hole. Now, as I said, I'll come back and uh, I will have my jigsaw with me tomorrow and I'll elongate that hole a little bit and make it nice and neat uh, so that that toilet flange will, flange will fit. It's a four inch flange uh, and that was about a three and a half inch hole. So not quite gonna fit, but I am looking down. I'll, uh, I'll actually bring you over here. So as you can see, uh, looking down our hole, there are the wires. Now, it's kind of the nature of the beast when you are working on a house. It's nothing the electrician did wrong. Um, we get in each other's way, but it is something that I'm gonna have to uh, address. So they may be down far enough that when I put in, um, it's called a, a closet sweep, or it's, it's just an elongated 90 so that nothing gets stuck in it. And I'll show you when we get downstairs to do the drainage. Um, it may clear those and there may be enough play in those wires that I can just kind of scooch them out of the way a little bit and we'll be fine. But, um, you know, if they become a real problem, then we may need to get in touch with the electrician and uh, kind of compromise something. But I think they should be okay. Like I said, they're down pretty far. Um, they look like a good eight inches down or so. So we should be able to kind of maneuver around them. So for the remainder of this lesson, what I'm going to do is stub out for the supply line and I'm going to also measure out where I want the main stack to come through. Uh, it's going to be in this wall right behind the toilet somewhere and that's the the uh, the vent that's going to go straight through our roof. I'm going, to, I'm going to get it as close to the main drain as possible uh, as far as a vertical rise just for ease of putting it all in and, and kind of explaining everything for you guys. Um, and then uh, that should do it for today so uh, stay tuned. Before I leave, I'm going to clean up my mess. Construction site or not, I always look professional. And okay, that's it for today's lesson. Uh, pretty easy. If you have any questions, make sure you uh, post them um, for my class. Check in, make sure you're getting on Google Classroom uh, or at least emailing me, doing something just to, to stay um, present. Uh, as I said, we've kind of come into this class becoming more of a pass-fail than a graded just because of the, the circumstances of us doing this remote learning right now. Uh, to everyone else that's starting to join, thanks for taking an interest. I hope you're getting something out of this. If, uh, if there's something that you're thinking you may want to learn, uh, let me know. Uh, as, as time goes by, this, this may become a thing. I, I, I don't know. I'm just having a good time with it right now. Um, you know, I, I don't feel quite as lonely sitting in this house all by myself, kind of, you know, uh, uh, well, it, it is odd still sitting here talking to myself, but, uh, but I hope you're getting something out of this. And uh, like I said, if there's anything that you want to learn more of, let me know. Um, our upcoming lessons are going to be uh, uh, to my left here. We're going to rough in the tub. Um, and then 
we'll move over to probably bathroom number two. There's going to be some kind of interesting things going on in there uh, as far as how the venting is going to go. I don't think uh, our toilet is going to have the, the same issues we have here. I've looked underneath. It looks like a pretty, pretty uh, straightforward run, so that'll be nice. Um, but there's going to be a pedestal sink in there, so it's going to be a little different than the double basin sink that is going to go uh, right in front of me. Um, and that has its own little nuances on how to how to put that in and then we'll go through all the venting and and how to tie everything together we'll move over to the kitchen area we'll get the culinary vent in uh, i need to reach out to the uh, inspector he had mentioned to the homeowner that he's looking for a double trap i just want to see what exactly it is that he's looking for on that um, if he wants a double trap or if it or if it's uh, that he wants an air gap um, but again we'll get into those sort of specifics once we get over there but just you know just to let you know what's coming up um, other than that thanks for watching as i said my class make sure you check it in with me and uh, i'll i'll see you on the next video have a great day Do not go in there. Woo! No. Don't nobody go in there for about 35, 45 minutes. No, no. Paper. I'm rich! Yes!